Welcome, Ahmed. I'm so glad to have you here. How are you today? Good, 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 Catherine. Likewise, I'm very, very excited about this and uh, looking forward to the discussion. Oh, wonderful. I'm sure my audience will enjoy deeply as much as I'm enjoying your company every time. Um, would you like to share your story a little bit about moving to Canada and um, how it was actually? Sounds good. Yeah. So I'm an, uh, um, a telecom engineer uh, by, by degree and I have a bachelor and I'm originally from Egypt um, and I've been more than 14 countries all over the world before I came to Canada. And I've been mostly with telecom and IT uh, companies like Motorola, Cisco, Nokia. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last uh, company that I was uh, working on before I came to Canada was Cisco. And I was doing a smart city program, which was $180 million uh, worth of budget. And I wanted to come to Canada just again to secure uh, education for my family and, and you know, live, um, you know, a happy life uh, as most immigrants, uh, you know, like to do. And, you know, when I came to Canada, I was thinking, you know, with my experience, you know, in telecom and IT and project management, program management, I'll land a job real quick, you know, specifically after this big smart city program that I've delivered and I was very proud of. Surprise, surprise, you know, that was not the reality, you know, uh, Im immigrants take a lot of time to settle and, and understand the cultural difference, the 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 job search, uh, you know, realities and how to prepare for an interview, how to do your resume, how to network. And definitely my network was zero. You know, when I came to Canada, I was building a network from scratch. So it took me a while and uh, I was lucky to be mentored and coached by very good people who really took my hand and, and showed me the way and told me how to adjust uh, to the Canadian culture. And then I managed to come back and work with, for Cisco in Canada, uh, PwC, Motorola, uh, Microsoft for six years. And then I moved to the US uh, for almost two years with Indeed.com and uh, been in the career for almost now uh, 14 years uh, in tech. So. Um, this is where my pain, you know, started, you know, when I felt the pain myself, I thought uh, I need to help more people who are suffering from the same pain like mine. And I then um, started to coach and mentor for free, uh, volunteer with a non-for-profit organizations and help newcomers, you know, understand and adapt to those uh, challenges that I faced. You're doing so many incredible things. Actually, I'm one of the people who is very grateful to you because you helped me get my message out there, especially with Microsoft. But I know that you also helped more than a thousand people land their jobs in North yeah. America. What were the challenges that they were facing and that you were facing on that path? 100%, yeah. So again, most immigrants, they don't know what they don't know. And this is the biggest challenge. And there is a lot to learn, you know, like, you know, the way resumes are written, the way um, targeting the companies and getting referrals, uh, knowing, you know, the interviewing process, knowing how to prepare for an interview. Those are things that I was never aware about uh, when I came to Canada. And, and this is what most of the people, unfortunately, struggle with today. So um, one of the biggest struggle that most people also suffer from is finding which role should I focus on? Because, you know, again, and this was my mistake, you know, when I came, I thought I'll, I'll put so many things in my resume and put so many things in my profile, maybe one of them will, <laughs> will catch interest, you know, and unfortunately, that doesn't work here at all. You know, when you confuse your audience or your readers, um, then they will just go away, you know? So I needed to change everything and, and focus on one role for um, my experience that the role is 100% needed in the market and there is a demand on it. And I have to research that there is a demand and there is companies who are hiring for that role before I even start with writing my resume or before I even update my LinkedIn. So again, there is so many challenges, definitely, the language and the communication is the biggest barrier uh, that most people face here. And unless you can speak fluently in English and also can communicate effectively, and there is two different things here, um, and, and in any role, whether you're a technical or non-technical person, communication is key. 
But we tend to put a lot of things in our resumes. That's the truth. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I, I was in IT industry. I was programmer for 15 years. And the trends are changing, right? Especially now, it's a little bit challenging in economic field. Uh, what are the trends that you have encountered, uh, especially in the IT jobs job market in, in uh, America and in Canada? Yeah, no, again... Today's world, you know, uh, AI disrupted all the jobs, you know, everything. And, and, and if you're not aware about, you know, how the disruption affected your industry or your role, then unfortunately you will be suffering more. Uh, so, for example, in IT, all the QA jobs are almost gone today. You know, like testers are gone because now with AI and, uh, and automation, those can be easily done by a machine. Uh, so those are, uh, you know, some of the impacts of the evolution of AI and, uh, you know, technology in, in, in this world. So whatever jobs that um, are today available, they may not be available after five years or maybe one year or two years. You know, the, the, the big problem today is that, you know, schools or universities are very behind from industry and and when you know industry like employers are hiring they need people with experience whether you're a fresh graduate whether you're um you know uh, a senior um, graduate so if you don't do projects while you're studying if you don't really volunteer to give your 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 hands you know some sense of what the job do or or what the job entails then unfortunately it's going to be tough for you to uh, compete with, with whoever in the market. And again, with those layoffs that is happening today, there is so many people uh, who are very, very competitive in the market and are looking for jobs. So it's not only about technical skills today. It's also about your understanding of the process and getting coached by someone to help you with your journey because there is so many variables, there is so many unknowns, and you you don't know what you don't know, and, and it's gonna work with you on, if you only have someone who show you your gaps, if you have someone who can coach you and mentor you uh, on that way. It's exactly closer to what you're doing, uh, Catherine, with your coaching practice, you know, like all, um, entrepreneurs or startup owners or founders, they need coaching too. And like, we all don't know what we don't know. And, and it's a big field. You know, there's so many areas that we don't know about how to get customers, market the products and position it and brand it. This is almost the same in, in the career. Exactly. And everything is changing so quickly. Like, let's elaborate a little bit on AI, uh, your thoughts on it. Is it here to help us or is it here to take away a lot of jobs? Uh, what are the possibilities that professionals, especially in IT industry, can adopt? Like, what are the skills exactly that they need to work on to maybe, you know, uh, uh, position themselves a little bit better, especially with the coaching assistance. Like everything is changing so quickly. And as you said, coaches are saving maybe even years of preparation and doing all of these things, right? 100%, yes. So, you know, in terms of the tools or the skill that, you know, um, folks in professional, folks in IT needs to adapt is, for example, data uh, analytics or uh, telling stories with data you know like those things are not easy to acquire and they need a lot of training a lot of practice in order for them to be able to read data and then from this data uh, manipulate it and, and you know analyze it and find trends find you know um, opportunities for their employer or for their uh, end customer in order to optimize time, you know, it's all, you know, today it's all um, if, about time, you know, like if time is a great asset today and it's very scarce and everybody needs to be more productive, more efficient and more, um, um, how can I say it, more able to um, deliver in, in shorter time or, or less time. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where AI becomes handy. And this is where 
you know, the same thing happened in the job search. And like, if you gonna spend so much time to build a resume for each and every role, this will take you forever. Uh, but there is now tools that you can just upload your resume and, you know, put the job description. And in few seconds, you get a resume tailored to that, um, you know, job description that you can apply for. If you keep using the same resume for all the jobs, unfortunately, that doesn't work. Actually, that's that's something which I experienced because back when I was working in corporation, I was one of the people who was reading the resumes and deciding if someone will join the company. And uh, people are making mistake by actually sending the same CV everywhere. While what you just mentioned is that they need to adapt even the CV to a specific job, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I noticed LinkedIn is moving towards like this kind of AI tools, which like can suggest you a job. But if you still upload the same CV, there is a person reading to that. And if you confuse them, you will lose that opportunity, correct? 100%. And again, this is where you need to understand the hiring process and the ATS software. You know, the ATS is the applicant tracking software that is mostly working on matching keywords between your resume and your job description. So if they don't find a match, mm -hmm. or they can find a match, but they will rank candidates based on that match. And so for example, if there's 1000 applicants to one job, they will rank them from one to thousand. And then, mm -hmm. you know, what will happen is that the recruiter or the HR person will just take the first 20 or the first 15. So oh, whoever, I, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> yeah, this is how it works today. And, you know, unfortunately, this is why so many people are not getting responses. So many people are just getting that automated rejection email. You know, sorry, you're not uh, accepted. We we proceed with someone else or whatever that email is. So, so what you're saying that SEO is actually important when you write a CV too, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the same concept like SEO. Like you know, when, you, when you type in Google, you know, coaching, and, and then you find, you know, you will see that the first page is, is the best page and only people go through the best page, the first page and, and only maybe through the first five or 10 uh, you know, uh, um, findings in in that page. That's the same thing, you know. So that's what happened when hiring managers or recruiters, you know, filter those resumes to get you know the top. They don't have time now to read all the resumes. And unfortunately, AI disrupted the HR team a lot. You know, so many jobs are lost in HR team. So the numbers, if let's say you have an organization before AI that have 100 people, it may have five or 10 people HR. Today, if it's the same organization, 100 people, it will have only two people max, you know? And those two people will not have the time to read all resumes. They have to use those tools to screen the resumes out and then they will screen it real quick for five seconds, 10 seconds max. And then they will call the first 10 maybe. Uh, and they will hire or maybe interview three only from those 10. That's that's the process, you know. So most people, unfortunately, don't know this process, don't know why they are not getting accepted, don't know why this is not working for them. So this is where a coach like me or other coaches can help them save time, frustration, uh, money, and um, so many things, you know. The, the, the biggest thing that I'm, I'm seeing, and, and this is where I felt the pain myself, you know, bills keep coming, you know, when you're not working, bills don't stop coming, unfortunately, you know, Please. and this is where it becomes very stressful. You're competing with the time and money too. So the more you wait, the more you feel that stress. Uh, so that's where I highly, highly recommend people who are hearing this or viewing this today, if they are stuck for some time and without getting any action, speak with someone, don't stay uh, idle or don't just sit tight. You know, it's going to get more stressful, more tougher. And That's, every exactly. Day. That's exactly what I wanted to ask you. Don't you feel that that puts a lot more pressure on candidates? Because they, they actually, they are not making, maybe they have much more powerful skills and maybe they are more 
of a good fit for a job, but a tool is deciding, which I am honestly hearing for the first time. I have yeah. to be honest, like this is definitely something which is a skill which we need to acquire and we don't know. You know, Ahmed, I, I see you as an angel on earth. I have to say that. Uh, you helped me and you helped so many of my friends actually be more seen as speakers in the different communities which you were leaning. And we are very truly grateful to you. And we made so many beautiful contacts and all of that. And now you dedicated your time and your efforts and your knowledge to help people find jobs, right? Uh, I know you are doing one-on-one -on -one and group coaching. Would you like to share with us a little bit how that looks like and how you can help people with all of these things we actually discussed today? 100% yes. You know, I, I have a free consultation on my website. Everybody can go to futurecareer.net, book my time for free consultation, and I'll go through you know what's holding them from that uh, job uh, that they are looking for. And also, I have so many free templates that I am open to share on my website. Uh, you can just, you know, download it freely. And uh, I host a bi-weekly call Sunday, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern for more than 50 people. Yesterday, we had almost 40 people joined us uh, asking questions. I have other coaches joining me, an HR person as well joining me and, you know, answering questions from different perspectives, you know. Sometimes me as a technical person, I understand, you know, special aspects, but HR, they have their own thing too. So for example, you know, one of the questions that was mentioned yesterday that I learned for the first time, that HR people don't like to be harassed. They don't like to be, you know, uh, pushed uh, in a corner, you know. So if, for example, you keep sending them emails, you know, to ask them about the job and follow up, they, the, the, you know, the, the best action that we, they will do, they will just reject you. They will just, you know, uh, filter you out, you know, so that they avoid those kind of, of, of push or stress that they are. So anyway, um, you know, there's so many things that I can offer to everybody. I highly, highly recommend people to go to futurecareer.net mm -hmm. to learn more and, and get benefits of my blogs. I have a daily blog almost that I post there uh, with so many insights about, you know, what they can do with their journey. Uh, I will definitely leave the link in the description so it will be easier for them. I, I was smiling when you said that HR people don't like that. Actually, I didn't think anyone likes that, right? Yes. Like there are a lot of coaches who are suggesting follow up, follow up, follow up, but there is kind of a nice limit to that, right? <laughs> Yes. So so we need to be still still we are humans, but we need to be a little less pushy. At least I, I believe I believe so, because these professionals are very, very busy, you know, and they appreciate their time. But uh, if you can help with writing a good resume, which can actually fit all of these tools, I believe that's a much better way to do these things than actually to follow up with people who are behind the scenes. Would you like to share some of the success stories that uh, actually showcase uh, how you helped people, angel yeah. on earth? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I had a client who was working as an Uber driver for some time because they, they he couldn't really find, you know, a, a role in the software development and you know with my coaching with my support you know he was able to land one of the big tech companies uh, in Canada and again you know imagine you're chasing you know twenty dollars an hour max uh, as an uber driver to one twenty thousand dollars uh, a year uh, that's a big shift and definitely you know a lot difference uh, in finances but again it's a lot of work so one of the things that you know uh, I can do to help is guide and coach but if the other person or the candidate is not really persistent, is not willing to put the effort and invest the time to learn and cover their gaps, unfortunately, nobody can help them. You know, so this is where it's a, it's a balance between you know what coaches can do versus what um, people can uh, do on their side too. Because again, as you know, the technology is going very fast. So many certifications, so many experience needed, and so many changes, and and that's running every day. You know, so whatever we know yesterday is not maybe available today. 
And you know, one of the other success stories again is uh, someone who I uh, helped uh, recently uh, to work for Visa uh, in in the U.S. You know, he's a product manager and he's been struggling for almost six months after graduation. And then uh, I managed to coach him and you know help him tailor his resume and adjust his positioning, adjust his interviewing skills. You know, and we went through multiple mock interviews to make sure that he state the words that they really uh, want to hear versus uh, the words that they don't really want to hear. Because again, every company, every team in the company is a different tribe. You know, there's what's called tribal knowledge mm -hmm. in those areas. And if you don't do the research and you just go without preparing, unfortunately, you will be like everybody else. And that's not going to help with your offer letter. Mm -hmm. Now, when you mentioned that, it looks like uh, writing a CV these days, it's more like a personal branding, right? 100%, yes. It's, again, you know, think about it from that matter. You're communicating with someone who you don't know who's reading it, and you have to make them like you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's a big challenge, right? Yeah. So how do you do this is, again, removing anything that could be controversial, anything that could create bias or discrimination you know we are human beings at the end of the day you know so some people may not like specific nationality some people may not like specific let's say background so you don't need to mention those in your resume or or your linkedin because that might create bias or discrimination again as a human being you know nothing wrong with that background or nothing wrong with that race but it's just a, a normal uh impact of the culture that that person who's reading uh, have been uh, branded or have been you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, living all his life or her life it happens a lot it's 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 very usual for people to judge book by its covers right <laughs> <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Uh, is it important that people are uh, actually residents of Canada and USA that you can help them or you can help globally Yes, um, you know, so if they really want to get a job in the US and Canada, most uh, employers here, because of the taxation, they need people to live in the US or Canada, even if they will work remotely, but they still need to live in the US or Canada, because again, there is a taxation piece of it that cannot be applied for um, uh, expats outside of the US and Canada. And again, plus security wise, some employers will never let their data uh, you know be accessed from outside of the us or canada so that's another aspect specifically for it folks uh, you know mm -hmm. when you're a networking person or you're uh, cyber security you know you're you're touching a very sensitive uh, system so those positions um, cannot be done outside of the uh, canadian or us soil uh, of course uh, that's that's and that's my... that's a very that's a very important information also. Mm -hmm. uh, any last thoughts? Would you like to like share your message to the candidates? You know, some of them are, might be afraid. Some of them just graduated. Some of them have been laid out. There are a lot of people looking for jobs. There are also a lot of jobs, but we need to find a perfect match. I guess they are struggling. I guess maybe they are in career shifting or whatever. What are your thoughts? What would you like to tell them? Yeah, my my, you know, wisdom here is always stay positive and stay proud. You know, uh, this is one of the key areas. It's a mindset. You know, if you already mindset as a survivor or somebody who's gonna work it out, then you will you will be able to solve the problems. But if you're losing mindset or you're failing in your mindset or you think you'll never achieve it unfortunately that's the biggest problem that most people have you know when they try for one time two time three time and they fail they stop trying then that's the end of the world then unfortunately they you know already surrendered and and that's the biggest challenge that most people unfortunately um stay with uh, for some time so my biggest uh, wisdom here is is never give up but you know if you don't know what you don't know you need to ask someone who knows you know you need to reach out to coaches mentors people in the field to guide you coach you and 
and there is another wisdom here if you keep doing what you're doing you keep getting what you're getting and and this is absolutely true in the job search so if for example if you're applying to jobs with the resume and you're not getting interviews that means that your resume is not working you know you know full stop you know you need to change your resume you know if your linkedin is not getting you attention if hiring manager or recruiters are not coming to you through linkedin then your linkedin needs some work you know this is where a coach like me or others can help you with that uh, aspect you know if you're getting interviews and you're not getting offer letters that means that your interviewing skills needs some help you know so you need some coaching and you need to know what you're doing wrong in those um uh, aspects I believe coaching is very important because it's it's saving time. Like we can we can search for the results ourselves. Back then, I just wish to share I was rejected 246 times when I wanted to publish my book. 247 time was a yes, but I had a mentor, <laughs> you know, and then my book became a bestseller. So never give up. Rejection is just a redirection and find someone who, who can show you the way. We used to say we don't need to invent hot water. There is always someone who already know how to cook the meal, right? Yes, yes, 100%. I love what you just mentioned, you know, and, and this, again, it's a journey. You know, everybody is in a journey, whether you're in your career or in your business, it's a journey and you will face challenges every day. You know, it's just how are you adapting to those challenges, how you're solving those challenges. This is how you gain experience and this is how you get hired or, uh, you know, headhunted by, you know, big companies or employers, you know, whether you're a business or, 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 or uh, an employee. You mentioned the free consultation call on your website. Um, I guess the the other option for people who want to connect with you is LinkedIn, right? Yes, LinkedIn. I'm always open to connect through LinkedIn. Anyone can reach out to me, and I'm happy to help them and send them, you know, you know, recordings of videos on on how to write resumes. Again, there is some free help that I can do. Uh, you know, it's not the best but you know again it could give somebody an idea about what they can do initially and if they still get stuck they definitely need to uh, reach to me or someone uh, like a career coach i absolutely recommend you because i know your heart is pure and and it's it's at the right place thank you so much for being my guest i truly enjoyed and i hope you did too thank you so much Catherine. really enjoyed it too and and you know you're definitely also doing a, a lot of um, you know, impact to the world through your career, uh, through your coaching practice. And on my myself learned a lot from you. And uh, definitely, it was an honor to host you multiple times in Microsoft and uh, indeed and other um, companies that I was working for. Thank you. I'm truly grateful for that. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.